What is up, Copy Squad? It's your boy, Kyle Milligan of KyleTheWriter.com, and today we're going to talk about how to get copywriting clients with no portfolio or experience. Um, again, we've been we've been trucking through this topic quite a bit lately. It's, it's a number one question, how to get clients. I don't have experience. I don't have a portfolio. What should I do? I want to get paid. I want to get $1,000 a month on retainer. I want to get $5,000 a month on retainer. Well, I've got a weird like a different question completely the not the same question it wasn't how do i get clients it was like i've got all this experience where should i what copywriting niche should i go into how should i get into this thing had nothing to do with like getting clients but my answer to this person was very much the same strategy i would use to get clients if i had to be in his shoes and it comes back to the same thing that i've been talking about over and over and over it starts with credibility and basically how do you build it's like, how do you get credit if no one will give you a credit card, right? How do you build credibility if no one will give you a job? So that's kind of like the credibility hack I want to share with you today. And it will actually have you turning away copywriting clients. You'll have more clients than you know what to do with. And that's based on my experience. So here's what I told that gentleman about how I would go about. Let me kind of explain his question to you. And I'll explain how this results in clients. So his question was, hey, man. I've got all this experience, about 10 years in the healthcare industry, and I've been kind of dabbling in internet marketing, just kind of getting up a couple bucks and then using that side income to like go on trips or something like that, or just using it for other sorts of expenses. And now I think I'm going to give up that healthcare thing, and I'm going to go into copywriting. So can I leverage my experience, right? I've got this experience in this other industry. Can I leverage that for copywriting? And I, I kind of went a different direction than I think he was looking to hear. My answer was, okay, I'm going to tell you what I would do because it's exactly what I am doing. Right? This is the most obvious thing. Like, If I made up an answer for that guy, I, it wouldn't be congruent Like, because this is what I would do and I'm doing it as, I, as we speak. I was, What I would do is if I had 10 years of health experience and I wanted to get into copywriting, here's what I would do. And this can go for anything, dude. If you flip burgers, I don't know if flipping burgers is an information product waiting to happen or not. But I mean, if you've if you've sold like Gary V is like a hustler, right? He sells baseball cards. He flips like micro machines, like little uh, model cars, and he goes to garage sales and he flips stuff, right? Maybe that's an info product. That's something that anyone can do, right? Maybe there's an info product in there about how to do that successfully, like how to get on eBay and set up your account, stuff like So whatever you've done, if you've ever hustled before, if you've ever had like a job or in a different industry, you can leverage this experience. And again, here's what I would do. This is, this is how you'll get copywriting clients with no portfolio or experience. I would simply take my expertise and sell it <laughs> like if i had a decent copywriting foundation right like i knew kind of i knew the big four emotions Ooh, I, I always forget my book take their money teaches you the, the real way to make a lot of money with copywriting using the big four emotions there's a secret language that speaks directly to the emotional center of the brain it bypasses all that logic crap that never works for sales that's why you can't sell on like just straight up track record or straight up facts and logic you have to trigger the emotional brain and in order to do that, you need to know the secret language that speaks directly to the emotional brain. And I'll teach you about how to do that in my book, Take Their Money. It's available at kylewriter.com forward slash book. Okay, so here's what I would do. I've got 10 years in healthcare. I'm going to take that experience and I'm going to sell it. Now, that seems very simple. It seems very basic, right? But how do you do that? How do you get people to like listen to you and buy your product in the first place? Well, it's really easy. I'll just I'll just explain how I did it because I'm doing it now. I've grossed over uh, multi four figures selling a twelve dollar book and only had social media and YouTube at my disposal. So if I can do it, you can do it. Here's what you do. I started out my YouTube channel breaking down sales letters. I didn't know what I was selling or who I was selling it to. I had no market and I had no market research. So all I did is I demonstrated the craft. Okay, I got this idea. I'll give a shout out. I got this idea from uh, Chase Renner, who is an SEO guy. And about a year and a half ago or two years ago, I was trying to learn SEO, search engine optimization. And this dude would do SEO audits for a couple hours a day. He would just record himself doing his job. And I was like, okay, I can do that because I don't know what I'm selling. I don't know why, why anyone should listen to me. So I'll just start recording me doing my job. And what I do is I, I break down sales letters. I tell you that you know most of your sales letter is like 60 to 70% of it is the research. First, you figure out what you're going to write, 
through doing research, through looking at other, and I've got um, other videos on this about my research process. Here, I'll sum it up. I read like five promos that are doing what I already want to do. I read them, right? But then I basically throw away two. Like I've just read them, cool. I take ideas, I make some notes. Now I got three, and I really read these, active reading. I mark up the margins, I try to figure out everything that they're doing. I really break those three down. Then I take one or maybe two of those remaining three, and those are like my models. I follow those very closely. When I get stuck, I refer back to them, and I say, okay, well, what did they do in this part? So that's the research. The research is 60 to 70%. Then I find, now I have my own objections that I've modeled off of that other promo because they're selling something similar. They had to answer the same objection, so I kind of model what they do. Then I write my own, whatever my product is, the unique elements of my product. I answer those objections with my own unique stuff. So I don't really come up with a lot of this stuff. I usually just kind of mimic what I see out there, okay? So what I did is I kind of borrowed what uh, Chase was doing with his SEO project and watched his channel grow on YouTube, and I did that myself. I break down sales letters on YouTube, and it was the same thing. My, my videos were like two hours and 20 minutes long on average. His videos were pretty long too, right? But what I noticed is that people started tuning in and people started asking questions. So the advice I gave this guy, I said, look, dude, Here's how you'll begin. Uh, the, the, the generic answer I gave him, if you want to get copywriting clients, you know, have a portfolio, and you've got like a decent foundation in copywriting, I would take the experience and I would sell it. So step one, how do you sell it? Who are you selling to? How do you get that research compiled? Well, let's play for the long game, all right? Let's say you want to be like a great copywriter and you want to write for big names, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I mean, dude, you don't wake up today and write for James Altucher tomorrow. It's like, or Robert Kiyosaki, or those are people I've wrote for. It took like a lot of practice training and, and getting in with like a core financial was like a huge, huge leg up for me and got me the, the access to that stuff. But I had to work very hard to get that, uh, those opportunities. So what you'll want to do, uh, I forget, how would I just distract myself by pumping credibility into this thing? <laughs> just literally got myself distracted trying to pump some, uh, I, I just tried to use easy, uh, new, easy, safe, and big on you, safe. My credibility, I like to try to drop that in there every here and there. See, I know how to weave these things in so I become more trustworthy and more credible. And then sometimes when I'm like, oh, I need to weave in some emotion. Like I say, it's a secret language. I teach you how to speak this language in my book, but it's a secret language. I just kind of like, I just, I know I need to start dropping it at certain instances. Like I just, okay, time to do it. It's like a second nature. But it literally just derailed what I was saying. If someone can remind me what the hell I was just talking about. So, um, yeah, it's a secret language of copywriting. It will it work wonder. It'll help you. It could help you sell a lot of stuff. I sold multi, multi four figures of a twelve dollar book. Isn't that 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 blew my? I'm having, I'm I'm surprised at how that was going. So anyway, I'll just go back to the beginning. What I would do is I would demonstrate the craft for free, and then eventually people started to tune in. I have no idea how I got people to tune into my my YouTube lives where I was just breaking down sales letters. I might have been hashtagging copywriting on Twitter or something, but eventually people started tuning in. And I started building an email list. That's right. I was doing like a daily email list for copywriting tips. And I just tell those guys, hey, man, I'm going live. If you want to watch me break down a sales letter, check it out. I was demonstrating the craft for free. So that's that was probably step one. Tell people I've got copywriting tips. I can help you out. So if my expertise was, let's say, healthcare, I've got 10 years of healthcare experience. Well, why don't I leverage that somehow and offers like simply go to Google and see what the most common questions are. Case in point, again, the most common question I get is how to get copywriting clients. So again, all this is said to establish credibility. This is the major step that all freelance copywriters seem to skip. And I say all with like, I'm painting broad brush here, but it's like everybody wants to just read the book and get paid. But they haven't built up that third element of that safety emotion. The safety emotion that you need to trigger is I'm credible and I can help you get results and you don't have to worry about a thing, okay? So new, easy, safe, and big are my big four emotions. Safety, most people skip this. Most people skip this, but I'm gonna tell you. So basically, gather one or two people, <laughs> start telling them, hey man, I'm gonna demonstrate this craft if you're interested. If you've got a Twitter following, if you're on Facebook, whatever you gotta do. I, I just offered like a free copywriting tips email list. I forget how I built that too. I just basically started talking to people, say, hey, got this thing, come check it out. And slow, slowly and surely, people started tuning in. And uh, I got some complaints, basically like, damn it, Kyle, I'm, I can't sit here for two hours and watch you break these down. Can you split these videos apart? 
Um, and also on YouTube, it's difficult to drag and move backwards and forwards in a two hour video. Moving the needle just this much causes the video to skip ahead like 45 minutes. So those are the kind of common complaints I started to get. Like, uh, can you make the video shorter? Could you talk about this more? You kind of just breezed over this section of the copy and I didn't really understand what you were talking about. So what I did is I simply, and this is the same advice I gave that guy who had the uh, healthcare experience. What up, Dan? Welcome to the live, brother. So the, the advice I gave him was, Take your expertise, and I'm getting to how to get clients. I will get to that. Like I will explain how this makes you more clients than you know what to do with. So take that expertise, sell it. First thing I would do is build that audience and research of what you're actually going to sell by demonstrating your craft or your expertise for free. That's the only way I knew how to gather an audience. So I started giving away free stuff. Like nobody knows who I am. Nobody gives a crap about Kyle Miller getting into Gore Financial. So I started breaking down sales letters slowly, surely people started tuning in and they started asking questions and they started complaining about different things. And I took, I listened to those complaints and I listened to those questions. I answered like all those questions. I still answer loads of questions <laughs> like on a daily basis, dude. I still get so many messages, DMs and all that junk and I try to uh, be responsive as possible. So um, I took those, I take all those questions to heart and I started modifying my content. And I realized that people want shorter stuff. They want stuff more often. Um, a lot of the people I was working with or, were, or that were tuning in weren't writing sales letters or writing copy. They were still like in that theory mode where they just kind of like, I want to get my feet wet, get my foot in the door. I can't really follow along with the sales letter stuff. It's too in depth. So I noticed I needed to take a step back, maybe get a little bit broader. And then I started uh, looking for how can I do some sort of like more frequent content because, you know, there's only so many successful sales letters. Actually, I could probably break down a sales letter a day. But it just takes a long time to edit on YouTube and stuff. So I started with doing like demonstrating the talent, demonstrating the knowledge, demonstrating the content for free. That brought the audience. I also had an idea. So I got that from Chase Ranner does the SEO stuff where he was doing SEO audits on camera. Um, I also had another idea of what the freak. I keep losing my train of thought. My other idea was... Um, I'll, I'll come back to it. Okay. So, breaking down stuff for free. Daily stuff. I can't remember what the hell I was going to say. All right. So, people are asking questions. And eventually, what's going to happen is demonstrating your expertise. People are going to gather. They're going to ask questions. Anyway, I started answering questions. And eventually, what I do, I start catering my content to actually answering these questions more directly. So what, I, what, what this has done is I start to build a more loyal audience, people who are like, I, okay, this guy actually helps me out. He's not just throwing out Facebook ads saying, I can make you $10,000 a day. I am actually demonstrating I can help you by actually helping you. So um, now I have a, oh, it was never eat alone, Keith Ferrazzi, that's what I was going to say. Uh, he says that you should build your network before you need a network. And so you guys are my network. I started to build an audience before I had a product. I was like, I should probably start talking to people and see what they actually want to buy. So it was during this process of breaking down these sales letters, taking in the questions, taking in the feedback, that I actually developed my own sort of unique angle. And that, that has become the, the sales language, the secret language of copywriting that speaks directly to the emotional brain. I started looking at the things that were in these sales letters and I said, oh, this is how there's a billion different examples of people triggering new, easy, safe, and big. And I would mark those up in all my sales letters in green marker. If you get access to my swipe file, it's always in green. And I was like, okay, you can do this in a million different ways. It doesn't matter how you say it or what you say. What matters is that underneath these words, there's always the same few emotions, new, easy, safe, and big, triggering that this is brand new. It just came out, or this is something you've never seen before. You can only get it here. Or it's so easy, it couldn't be any easier to simply learn the language of copywriting and you can trigger this stuff all the time. And it's safe. Now, safe is another one that people seem to have trouble wrapping their heads around. It doesn't mean like, like you're rollerblading and you're wearing a helmet and knee pads. It means that you aren't going to get screwed over. You will not lose out. That can be like a guarantee. That can be like testimonials. That can be case studies. It can be demonstrations. Basically, it's showing that I'm not going to rip you off and run away or take your money and just <laughs> take their money is the name of the book. Sounds kind of sleazy in that context. It's a common complaint. I don't know if I'm going to change it or not now because it's become kind of branding. But it's basically saying I'm not just going to take your money and run off. And that's where these freelance copywriters get hung up in a big, big way is they come to the table saying, hey, pay me. I'm trying to get my start. They do it wrong. They say new wrong. They say I'm new to copywriting. 
so I've got no experience. I'm new to copywriting. I want you to pay me, and I'll write some stuff for you. I've got no expertise. Hopefully this works out. Thanks for giving me a shot. Sign off. Like, no. It totally disregards all those elements of the big four. That's why everyone keeps failing. And then they keep asking the same questions. Read the book. <laughs> Learn the big four. So, you're building this audience. You're building people who are asking questions. And they're telling you what they want to hear and what they want to learn. Okay? Again, this will get you clients. Follow me. Follow me. So here's what I do about that guy. I'd leverage the expertise. I would demonstrate the expertise. I would demonstrate it somehow in some capacity for free pretty much on like any sort of platform you want to. And I said, hey man, check it out. I know what I'm talking about. Here's a couple demonstrations, blah, blah. It doesn't have to be daily like what I do now. When I started, I was doing like one, maybe two a week and it took me forever. It was not efficient. That's another thing. This might take some time. Oh my God. You might have to invest more than like a week or two. So what you'll do is demonstrate your talent starts to gather an audience, okay, and as frequently as you can do it, listen to their questions, listen to their feedback. At this point, you simply bring all those things together, okay, you just, you, you'll eventually come up with your own unique way of answering these questions, because the questions are always the same. How do I get a thousand dollar client every month? It's the same question I get all day, every day. Well, have you tried using these big four emotions to talk about in my book, Take Their Money, at kylewriter.com forward slash book? Well, I've seen your pitch. It looks horrible, and it looks like you ignored all four. So it's probably a good start is to read this book and learn these things to speak directly to the person's emotional and decision-making center of their brain. So um, the questions are usually the same. You will have a unique spin that you'll develop becomes like your mantra, like your thing. Like this is how you answer this question. For me, it's become the language of copywriting. Right? I've got that. Like it's 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 my platform like I believe I believe in this and I know it makes a world of difference and I practice it in my own writing so for you it'll be your unique thing okay once you develop that okay now you have a product you have an answer you have a solution you have a market that wants that answer and solution now you create a product now you actually create the thing you can do this any way that's convenient for you you can make videos explaining your thing you can write a book explaining your thing you could do coaching calls, okay? If you wanted to be like a one-on-one -on -one thing and it has to be more personalized, you could do visits in your area or like seminars or something like that. I don't know exactly where your expertise lies, but there is some way to package what your knowledge and expertise is. And this can be quick or it could be slow depending on like how, how quick you move through this curve of figuring out what your market wants and giving it to them, right? So then at that point, you've got a thing to sell. Now sell it. Okay, this is how you begin to get clients. This is totally the opposite of um, I've got no experience. I would love to start copywriting. Please hire me. It's the opposite of that. Instead, I now come to the table and say, hey, my name is Kyle Milligan. I wrote this book, Take Their Money. It's about the secret language of copywriting. Um, is it any good? The book's great. Got great reviews. Um, teaches people about copywriting. But your, your clients won't be interested in that. They'll be, let me think, how do I put this? I wrote this book, Take Their Money, and within one week, this $12 book brought in um, over $1,000 with a list of 175 people. That's results. That's results. That's results. Now I'm marketable because I actually made money, all right, selling a thing, and now I can use those results as my own case study. So this is how, like, the rich get richer. This is how you compound your results to keep stepping up and stepping up and stepping up because... Now I am actually turning away uh, clients pretty much all the time. People I people I used to look up to on the internet and I still think are, I highly respect are saying, hey, dude, I saw what you were doing. I think it's great. These are people I used to be in contact with a long time ago when I had no experience. Like, hey, I saw that you're making big moves. I would love for you to come write for us. And it's like, wow, this is so cool. Um, this is something I would have wished would have happened a year ago, and now I just don't have the time. So now I actually have more clients than I know what to do with. Now I'm actually turning away people that I would have loved, killed the work for before. And what I did is I started by taking my expertise. I went First I got expertise. I worked for an entire year at Agora Financial. I wasn't allowed to mess around on social media. I wasn't allowed to build an audience. I wasn't allowed to do any side projects. Or And this wasn't something they told me. I told myself, don't do anything that will distract you for this whole year. Just get that experience and get that expertise. You're with, you're in the halls, the same room as the best in the world at copywriting. Just pay, pay attention to them, ask them questions, and learn. 
get the expertise. The guy I was speaking with on the email had 10 years of experience. He's already got it. He's already got it. The next step, sell it. How do you sell it? Well, if you don't have an audience, how do you build an audience? I just did it by demonstrating the craft. I just demonstrated the craft, the expertise. I didn't know, I wasn't selling anything. I was just building the audience and not even sure what was going to happen. I didn't know I was going to write a book one day that was going to be about the big four emotions of uh, sales. That kind of happened on accident by listening to the questions, gathering the feedback, and also seeing my own unique spin on all these things that was like, oh, actually, he, I, I started to eventually become opinionated about topics that I thought I didn't deserve to have an opinion about at first, right? So starting out, it's like, well, I just kind of say the same thing as what I read from Joseph Sugarman, and I say the same thing as Gary Halbert, and I say the same thing as, uh, well, that's like all the books I read on copywriting. So that's like, those are the main things, and then the rest came from like mentors. But actually over time, all these things started to take a life of their own inside my brain, and I had my own unique way of explaining things. And um, that became my own product, okay? So I would say, demonstrate that craft. So whatever your craft is, right? It doesn't have to be copywriting, that's the thing. It doesn't have to be anything related to marketing. You simply start producing some content around that, gather some feedback and questions, then create a product. This can be just like I started this YouTube channel, started doing the YouTube breakdowns in October, and it's now March. Take Their Money, the book, uh, launched January 28th, I think it was. And in that first week, uh, so that's right, from October to like January. In January, my New Year's resolution was to write that book. And I wrote it in four weeks and I put it out. And then one week later, it paid four figures, right? Four weeks, four figures. Not a bad payday, right? And it still makes money. It's made multiple four figures at this point. So yeah, I took a little bit of time, but I will now turn away work for the rest of my life, dude, because I have this foundation, I have this platform. And you can use that same exact thing. Like my, my book has made the money because I know how to sell. That's my argument. Whether I did it with strictly copywriting or this whole platform, I can still make the case, right? That's another thing that bugs me. Some people say, I don't have experience. Well, everything you do is experience. Everything you've experienced is an experience. And I can come to the table and people will say, Kyle, I see what you're doing on that YouTube channel. I see you growing that audience. I see you making sales on your book. I would love it if you'd come write for us. And I have to say, sorry, buddy, I'm really busy. So if you can simply create your own product and sell it, and I said this in probably the last video, there's or maybe, maybe two videos ago, there's two ways to, to get copyright experience is to sell your thing or sell somebody else's thing, man. That's, the only way to really sell anything, you're selling your stuff or you're selling someone else's. But if you sell your own thing and you take the time to build that up, and I've also said before, I don't recommend just diving in and hope and like diving off the cliff and building the net on your way down. That's been romanticized to death, and I don't think it's a safe or smart bet because when the pressure's on, you're all stressed out. Uh, your creativity and like your your dexterity, like your ab your ability to think on your feet, probably goes right out the window, man. So I would say get a foundation. Don't quit your day job to start. Do it like this, man. Do a YouTube video or something, or do a blog post. Or I've seen some people uh, run this stuff on their uh, Facebooks and whatnot, where they're just kind of like doing updates all the time. So um, it's different ways to make content. Do what works for you, baby. Build that audience, and then listen to the questions. When you get those questions, create that product. Now you've got some authority built up. And when you sell that, you have a case study about how you sold stuff. Now you're an authority in your niche. Now you've got money in your pocket, you're not desperate, and um, you also have a case study of success, all right? And this will also build your copywriting skills because I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot about marketing and other stuff outside of just sitting down and writing a sales letter that I never knew before. I learned the new, I learned the big four emotions from doing this. Um, it was actually Rich Sheffern. Uh, it's, Rich Sheffern is like a big time internet marketing guru. We were having a cigar one day and I was asking him about this, the whole project. I was like, I want to learn, I want to be a master copywriter. And he told me the best way to learn something is to teach other people. And I said, okay, I'm going to start talking to people and answering their questions and doing all that stuff on YouTube, and I'm going to see what I learn. And he was right. I learned the big four emotions thanks to this. And I've, it's brought a ton of awesome, awesome experiences that, again, I will be turning work away forever. So I highly recommend this track. This is how to get copywriting clients with no portfolio and no experience. You will build it while you build your audience. And that's money on money. That's compounding. That's 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 how the rich get richer. All right. So I hope this was. I know this is a little bit drug out and a little bit. I wasn't very organized. I'm sorry about that. But I do think that this is a really 
This is like the track I would take. Demonstrate your talent. Gather questions, figure out your market, what they want, sell it to them, okay? You've already got the expertise from something. If you don't have expertise, and I recommend really master something, like take something that you've known before and study it for six months if you've, been, if you've got experience before. If you're brand new, really hammer down for a year and then start trying to answer other people's questions and see how you can get involved with like a community or something. So uh, then you find out what they want, you package that. You package that and you offer it back to them and in a good, high quality product, don't put out a sham piece of crap product because that'll just shoot yourself in the foot. Um, put out a good quality product that really helps people and then you have a case study for sales, right? People will see what you're doing and they'll be like, wow, we would love for you to help us out. And that might be in that niche of that you were, you become a guru in, or it might be if you're a little more low key about it, right? Maybe you really focus on how your copywriting experience or use that copywriting expertise to really bolster your sales. And you can focus on that when pitching your services. So you could go from zero to, that's your portfolio, right? You can go from zero to portfolio in like a month or two, maybe three months, right? First month to kind of just dibbling around, demonstrating what you know. The second month, kind of gathering all those questions that you built a little audience and listening to them. That third month, build that product. So first month, demonstrate. Second month, you've got that audience. Just keep building, keep, keep demonstrating, keep putting out content or whatever you got to do to interact with these people. Could be an email list. Like you could Ben settle it. A lot of people want to be Ben settles, like daily marketers or whatever. Listen to those folks. So you do the whole second month. Give me feedback. Give me feedback. Give me feedback. That's research, baby. Then you sell it to them. Now at the end of the month three, you've got uh, you've got credibility, baby. That's what we're looking for. That's what everyone skips. Takes a little bit of time this way, but I highly endorse it. And I can sit right here without feeling uh, hypey or markety or whatever because I'm doing it. I'm walking the walk on this one. So. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in, Copy Squad. That's all I've got for this one. Uh, if you want to learn how to write words that really make you rich, if you want to master the secret language of sales that speaks directly to the emotional center of the brain, check out my book, Take Their Money. It's at kylewriter.com forward slash book. All right, thanks for tuning in. Peace out, Copy Squad.